you, would I be right in saying the first female? Yeah. Yes, in, in that position. Uh, she uh, was National Businesswoman of the, of the Year winner in STEM in 2022 and is currently, uh, was Director of Rugby of Women's Rugby at Corinthians Rugby Club and is now incoming President of uh, Corinthians Rugby Club. So I don't know how you have the time to be here, but we'll appreciate it if you can give us 30 minutes. Thank you for that introduction, Eamon. It's a pleasure to be here today, and as Eamon alluded to, I'm going to be looking at a video analysis with a, a sort of a, a fix on AI. So I'll tell you a bit about more at Rugby Smarts at the end. For now, what you need to know is I did turn down a pension well, well paid public service job to join this uh, crazy startup, so I um, don't know what that says about me. So video analysis has been around, give or take, for about 20 years now, and it has evolved quite a lot over that time. Way back in the day, and this was not too long after rugby first went professional, I was doing my sports science degree over in the UK. And I decided for the analysis module that I would look at the effect of penalty kicks on the outcome of a game of rugby union. Now, I got my videotapes, so that will tell you how long ago it was. And I went through a large data set to, to look at this. I actually nearly failed that module because there was absolutely zero research at the time to back up what I was saying. Clearly, my lecturer didn't really like any uh, original talks, so uh, that didn't go too well for me. And that was sort of the end of that time of my analysis journey. Now, the pro game has moved on a lot since, and actually, England Rugby have a huge department, well, all the rugby teams do, England Rugby have this huge department, and their focus is on finding what those winning games could be. And coincidentally, one of the biggest things they've found is that kicking has a huge outcome on the unsuccessful games. So I was right, my lecturer was wrong. Um, so there have been huge advancements in sport which will define team and individual performance. If you're at any professional or high level game, you'll see coaches, analysts in the stands with a huge amount of tech, lots of computers, just trying to figure out what's going on in the game and if they can make any improvements. In Ireland, every AIL team now has to record their games. So even at that level, amateur rugby, they have to record those games and it goes into a centralized uh, data center in the IRFA and that gets sent back out to the teams. The reason they do video analysis is it helps that, you know, those dynamic complex situations, you can visualize them very easily with video in a very objective and reliable way. It helps coaches make better decisions and actually it also helps officials who are refereeing the games make better decisions, although if you ask some fans, I don't think you might quite agree with that. So as we were developing Rugby Smart, um, I interviewed, I'd say, well over 100 coaches and analysts globally. Um, but COVID for us was give us access to people we probably never would have had access to before. And they were adamant that video analysis is a very important thing. And why? 65% of people are visual learners. And actually, if you look at the younger athletes today, that rises to about 80% because they've grown up with social media and their attention spans are actually shorter. So what does this mean for coaches? It means athletes cannot learn that effectively if you're just telling them. They have to be shown. They need to see what they're doing. So this visual data also helps boost communication then and engagement between the coach and the athletes. Um, so you get faster team and player development. So it makes it very easy to see both the good and the bad in the game. And actually, if you can provide immediate feedback, it helps the athletes retain that information better and for longer. Now, I'm going to apologize for any coaches in the audience for this stat, this stat now. I'm a level three coach myself, but actually they reckon experienced qualified coaches are only going to record just over 15, or recall about 59% of any critical events, not even all the events, critical events within the game. For novice coaches, that drops for another 
And the more time that passes after the match is ended, the more of that information is lost. This goes back to what Lisa was saying earlier. You need to have that balance between the data and the intuition. And it's the only way you'll be able to drive that performance improvement. Where video also helps is coaches need to be objective. And there's so many variables that may stop a coach being objective. You might have a favorite player. You're going to be a little bit easier on them. You might have a, someone you don't like that much, so you might be a little bit more harsh on them. But video brings that objectivity. And you can then see those positives and negatives much more clearly. And you have this concrete visual data to back up what you're saying. Where video also helps, you can track progress. So this is implications for you know, talent ID. Um, you can see how well players are getting on if they progressed in their game. And that can help build their motivation and confidence too around what they're doing. It also improves their recall. There's, you know, if you're in the heat of a game and you're, you know, your adrenaline is rushing, you're trying to control your emotion, you may not see the space that's in front of you. If you, if you go and look at the video afterwards and you start seeing that space and start seeing the plays you could have made, that then will translate back onto the pitch for the next session. So it should bring up your skill level just by learning. I'm going to give you, show you a quick video on how the rugby clubs in the Premier use uh, analysis just as part of their everyday business. <coughs> Resources available now for things like analysis. So we've all got apps in our phones. There's websites you can you can go on and analyze your opposition, your opposite number. What what a lot of data will allow you to do is to back up that feeling when you're right or wrong. And I think that's that's the important way of using it is to make sure you don't not almost contradict yourself. I mean, you, you've got to have the right people to interpret, and I think if you get the right people to interpret, it, they're pretty good at, at picking out the goal. We've we've employed Bill Gerrard who was um, a professor of stats and he's been excellent for us to see how the league moved on in the year that we haven't been there. It's obviously a massive part of the game now, every, every step we take is monitored when we are training and how fast you've done it and there's no hiding places now. You won't need anyone to tell you that the age of information is well and true. The new world of mass data, instant cloud access and high level supporting technology has evolved so quickly in the last five years that Premiership rugby clubs, like any organisation, have had to adapt to maximum efficiency. It's clear that clubs have embraced the data, but is it really that straightforward? When faced with the ongoing challenges of statistics management, interpretation and of course turning these numbers into something useful, they might feel they are dealing with an entirely different problem, one we never faced in my day as a player. So as you can see, the analysis is heavily embedded in, inside of sport now. As mentioned in the video, and as Lisa said earlier, you need to glean the meaningful insights that drive the performance and not just produce statistics. A lot of the feedback we've been getting, particularly in North America, where the game isn't quite as developed, is that <coughs> graduates are coming out of the universities now, and they can do video analysis, but they can't do performance analysis. And actually, they have this huge fear factor in doing anything live as well, in case they make a mistake on that, because to them, they see the statistics as the performance analysis. But as Lisa said, you're not. You're just doing data input on that. Now, this is where the coach comes in. You need to be able to see a problem and figure out what to do about it. So that intuition will never be replaced. We can only enhance what they are doing. Now there is many, many benefits for both the coaches and athletes, but what isn't really focused on a lot of the time is that negative side of the statistics. There is an argument, and there has been a study done on this, particularly in rugby, that it can take away the intelligence, the creativity, and the human connection within the sport. And this is because they have very you know, restrictive routines that may get in, imposed on the players. It can lead the players to become very risk averse, predictable and formulaic, which obviously makes it easier for non-positions to play against them. So coaches need to be really careful that they don't embed a culture where the players can play with their instinct, their emotion and their unpredictability, because then it becomes less attractive to fans and we don't have finals like we saw where you have players doing things data could never cover. What this can also do if you have too many statistics, 
it puts the individual above the team and it can cause players a lot of anxiety about making sure they're, they're reaching their metrics and hitting their stats. And this, thing, this can take away from their enjoyment and their performance within the game. We've, I've, I've had a lot of interviews where coaches have referred to certain players as stat monsters. And basically, they're trying to game the system because they're doing their best to meet these metrics because they don't want to be called out in front of the whole team when you're going through that post-match review. And then it can have the effect that if you have positive stats, you stop doing anything above and beyond that. So you ignore that additional contribution you could bring to the team because you've already checked all those boxes that they're looking for. So how do we overcome this? So the analysts need to work very closely with the coaches and they need to understand what that team is trying to achieve. And then they need to identify the metrics that's going to help the team reach those goals. Um, this will allow them to sort of inform the decisions and really impact driving that performance improvement and changing the behaviours. So context is key in this and it's the central piece of any good analytical work. So there is a huge important place for technology and data in sport, but a healthy balance does need to be established between where that data and intuition complement each other. New Zealand rugby manages this quite well. So on a match day, they say the players own whatever happens on the pitch because they see, feel and hear what's happening in that moment. They consider technology on a match day a much, much more of a supportive tool in the background that will help them inform those decisions that brings context and evidence to what they might say in a halftime talk, but actually not take over from what the players are actually going through. So I'm just going to show you another clip from that video because to me, in the last few years, the technology has just exploded exponentially. And this is where the coaches just three years ago were seeing where they thought the tech would lead them. But we've gone way beyond this at this moment in time. that show it's a very underused tool for any for capturing that suspected injury and any concussion events. To put it in context, there's 2.5 million injuries every year in sports in the USA alone, and they can be added from catastrophic right down to your very minor ones. So imagine if you had the technology embedded where the coach could prevent that injury from happening in the first place. AI-driven video analytics are going to help understanding this mechanism of injuries. They'll show you what the playing situation was at the time, the environment that was there, and what the athlete, the athlete movement patterns were. You can layer this up then with the physical stats that you might get from GPS or any other wearables, and then develop predictive models that will identify when an injury could potentially happen <coughs> and how you would prevent that. AI also will have the capability of creating personalised programmes tailored to athletes' individual needs, which a coach will not have the resources to do. And this can help them develop proper form and maintain proper technique. It could also give you real-time alerts if they think an injury is about to happen, so coaches can intervene earlier and hopefully prevent it. And if you're capturing that data on video, you can pass that over to the medical team, who can then give the proper care they need to, to the athlete because they will see everything that's happening. So if you leverage the power of AI and video, sports organisations will definitely be able to improve how they monitor and respond to injuries and try and keep those athletes healthily and hopefully 
injury free. If we look at off the pitch, sport is the biggest entertainment business in the world. It has the largest and most loyal fan base and it's still growing year on year and it's actually grown even more since COVID. And the evolution of technologies is helping fans engage in loads of new different ways. So how can video drive this? For example, I think it was uh, from the English pundits who was saying, why don't we stream live training sessions? They do open sessions in rugby for Dublin. Why can't I see that without having to travel three hours up there? In the same way that coaches get their match day insights, you can also have player statistics in a creative way going to the fans in the stadium, either on their mobile phone or on screens. I think it's Bar Music. Bar Munich recently have put something like 1,200 videos within the stadium to have that more immersive stadium experience. This data can then be gamified to increase engagement further, and then you can help with branding and sponsorship by having personalized content. The AI can also detect patterns faster than the human brain. So these are stories that will create moments that the fans can then save on their phones and replay as often as they want. Natural language generation and now chat GP or GPT uh, that can create match day previews, recaps and bios, bringing fans ever closer to players both on and off the pitch. And on a, a very different level, video analysis can be used for stadium management. So anyone who's over the venue can uh, plan strategically and actually make better decisions over time on how best to work with the fans when they do come into the stadium. So there's lots of exciting technologies that are emerging right now and they will revolutionize sports if they are utilized correctly. ChatGTP can process and analyze data in real time. So this could allow coaches to make those data-driven decisions and identify areas where the athletes may be struggling and give that immediate feedback to adjust technique or the strategy and help them reach their full potential. It can also play a significant role back with the injury presentation by analyzing tons of historical data and identifying the patterns then that will predict the likelihood of an injury occurring to a specific athlete. And then it can help minimize those risks. It can look at training regimes, it can look at areas of overtraining, and when it's integrated with video, you could track, uh, yeah, I think Robert was just saying, track with the muscle imbalances and any biomechanics as well. So AI and video, can be utilized for multiple applications. Um, there's already software out there that's using it for scouting and recruiting of athletes and evaluating any potential talent with lots of detailed insights into their performance. And these athletes can then be tracked over time. That has huge implications, particularly in the States where they get huge scholarships and they are scouted at a much younger age. AI could be used for automated refereeing so we can analyze footage in real time and then detect any violations or infringements that a referee might have missed. The NBA are actually trialing something like this in their D-leagues at the moment. Predictive analytics and decision making are already drastically changing, not that I'm an advocate for this, but sports betting and how people uh, approach the game of fantasy sports. Virtual and augmented reality can be used to improve form and technique. It can overlay those visual cues for the athletes on the performer's video feed. And this will help them better visualize and understand where to make improvements. Can you imagine in a scrum if you knew the exact angle to get the most power off your base to get that show on your opposition and you could do that training all on your own? It also means you could do remote coaching. This will be especially good for people living in remote areas, or in my case, I'd love to have Dan Carter teach me how to kick while I'm in Galway and he's in New Zealand. You know, we all have our dreams. So there is a huge amount of possibilities on how tech can be implemented in the sport, and particularly how we can integrate this with the video. So just to tell you about how I ended up here talking about sports technology and video analytics. So when I was director of women's rugby at my local club, I ran an initiative called the Give It A Try program. In the very first session, I had this little girl run up to me and she showed me a picture of myself and my aunt playing soccer together when we were 16. It turns out that her granddad was also my first soccer coach. Now her dad, who brought her along, he was a former rugby player. So I immediately uh, convinced them he should be out coaching the girls team. 
Now, for anyone who knows Will, you also know his background is technology, and in particular AI and its application to manipulation of video. So three years after we first met at that Give It A Try program, he approached me and asked me to join him in a new business venture, which became Rugby Smarts. So Rugby Smarts is an automated video analytics software that uses AI, computer vision, and machine learning. So it's an all-in-one coaching tool that automates that manual event tagging that Robert was going into great detail, thank you Robert, on how time-consuming and painful that is. So this can actually take anything up to 10 hours depending on the level of the analyst or the coach doing the, doing the analysis. The beauty of it is that self-learning element, element means the more a coach uses it, the more intuitive it becomes and it learns their individual coaching philosophy. It'll also help generate new revenue streams, which can do automated video highlights and do all your sponsorship and branding around that. Our journey actually started here at the iHubs. So we did the New Frontiers program one to three, so I thank all the team here who helped us on that first step. We're now Enterprise Ireland and Jetro Kimes. Jetro are the Japanese equivalent of EI, and they have one of the biggest growing rugby population in the world and one of the highest funded leagues. So it's great to have that in in the door. We have customers now across three different continents, but we have a big focus on North America for the next year. So we have gone from starting giving it a try to now being part of the iReview Innovation Programme. And in the next few weeks, we're going to be releasing, releasing our GAA Smarts module uh, because we've just finished some successful trials locally. So as I said, the idea of this is not to replace any other aspects of coaching was to combine it with the coach's experience and intuitions to help inform decisions on training priorities, team selection, tactics, and longer term on player recruitment and retention issue. So clubs want their own data sets and they want them tailored to their particular coaching philosophies and needs and get their team specific insights out of that, which all of this will do. The automation is key. And the reason the automation is key is you take away the manual effort and they can go straight to that performance improvement element. It's particularly good for those teams who don't have the time or resources to code matches. So we want to ensure we, you know, we narrow that gap between the professional game and the amateur game because if participation moves too far from performance, you have a real issue in getting players through that pathway to move on to the future. Thank you very much. Please come and chat me afterwards.